Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. This is part two of our lung mini series. One of the things I want you guys to understand is that there are only five causes of hypoxemia. That is the amount of oxygen that diffuses in your bloodstream after you take a deep breath in. That's an important concept to understand because it doesn't matter where you are in the world or where you are in the universe. In a human being, there's only five causes. We're gonna talk about all five of those causes and give examples of each today on Medicine Deconstructed. All right guys, so for the patients out there that are on oxygen, for the people out there that are short of breath, you're asking yourself, why am I short of breath or why am I on oxygen? In our last episode, what we alluded to was something called a hypoxemia, which is a reduced amount of O2 in your bloodstream. And I had said to you, and I wasn't lying, there are only five causes of hypoxemia. Reason number one, hypoventilation. Well, what does hypoventilation mean? It means you're not breathing. If you don't breathe, you're not breathing in that oxygen. If your oxygen level in your bloodstream gets low, you're not gonna be able to supply your organs with energy. And if you can't supply with your organs with energy, your organs will die off. Specific examples of this? Well, let's think about this. You could be taking medicines like opiates, for example, people that are on heroin, people that take too many opiates. When they come into the hospital, or you might notice them, they're sleeping, they're out. That opiate, may stimulate their brainstem and tell them not to breathe. And they don't breathe. Reason number two, you have a VQ mismatch. Well, what does that mean? The V stands for ventilation. So ventilation by definition means that you're getting rid of CO2. Carbon dioxide is what our bodies create as a waste product. So when we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So the definition of ventilation is getting rid of carbon dioxide. The Q is just a fancy way of saying perfusion, which means it's a fancy way of saying delivering blood to the lung. So that's where that right heart is pumping blood to the lung, right? And it goes through the pulmonary artery and then through the capillaries. And those capillaries are essentially the lining of the balloons. So if you have a mismatch, between what you're breathing, the ventilation part, and how much blood is going to that area, we call that a VQ mismatch, and you may not get a lot of oxygen or enough oxygen in your bloodstream. An example of a VQ mismatch would be, what if one of your balloons is full of fluid? That balloon can't ventilate very much. The bloodstream can get through there, right? Because the bloodstream's not blocked off, but it can't ventilate. That's a VQ mismatch. Or the opposite. You have a blood clot in your lung. Now the blood flow can't go through there, right? The blood flow can't go through there, but you're still able to breathe. Doesn't matter because your hemoglobin is not getting that oxygen and your bloodstream is not getting that oxygen. That's what a VQ mismatch is. Now there's a third reason. It's called a shunt. All a shunt is, is perfusion without ventilation. So what do I mean by that? That means that blood keeps flowing, but there's no way to ventilate that area. That's called a shunt. So it doesn't matter because you can't ventilate and you can't get that oxygen in and that blood is flowing, that's a shunt. It's essentially the same thing as a VQ mismatch. It's just heavily exaggerated and saying it's all perfusion and no ventilation. That's a shunt. Reason number four, it's a reduced diffusing capacity. All that means is your balloon either isn't there, it's popped, such as the case in emphysema, which is caused by smokers, right? So when you smoke, you can cause yourself to develop emphysema, so your lung dies off. That balloon essentially pops, it's gone. So you have a reduction of your diffusing capacity. Let's just say, for example, you have four balloons. 
If one of your balloons pops, right, you've lost a quarter of your diffusing capacity. You're not gonna diffuse very well. Or if your balloon is full of water or full of infection, oxygen has a tough time getting through that water and getting through those cells that are causing infection. Or in the case of what's called interstitial lung disease, autoimmune lung disease, or in the case of COVID, diseases that I take care of, those balloons are full of white blood cells. Oxygen has a tough time getting through those white blood cells. So it can't get in your bloodstream. That's a reduction of diffusing capacity. The fifth reason, it's not a common one, and it's one that has been demonstrated in recent comic book movies. When you look at Avengers Age of Ultron and you look at the city in which they were fighting, what was Ultron doing? Well, he had put machines on the bottom of this city to lift the city up at a higher altitude. The reason why people were getting short of breath is because as you travel higher in the sky, if you're climbing Mount Everest, for instance, the amount of oxygen molecules in the air that's surrounding you are much less. The percentage is the same. Oxygen is always gonna be 21% of the air, but the amount of molecules up there are way less. The molecules are farther apart, so you get short of breath. When you watch football, if you're a football fan, and you look at the Denver Broncos, everybody's like, oh, they're gonna have a tough time playing it mile high. They're gonna have a tough time acclimated to that environment. That's because there's less oxygen up there. When you have less oxygen molecules up there, your body wants to compensate. How does your body compensate? It makes more hemoglobin so it can carry it more. That's what it does. But if you're only up there for a couple of hours, you're gonna be short of breath because you're at 6,000 or 7,000 feet, or if you're climbing Everest 15 or 20,000 feet, you're gonna be short of breath. So again, there are only five causes of hypoxemia in a human being. Hypoventilation, VQ mismatch, shunt, reduction in diffusing capacity, and altitude. You are short of breath for a combination of those five reasons, or at least one of those five reasons. 99 times out of 100, it's really not gonna be altitude because unless you're on Sokovia and you're in Avengers Age of Ultron and you just happen to be traveling up, altitude probably isn't an issue. So you really only got four things to rule out. So get that chest x-ray, get that CAT scan, consult your local pulmonologist if you're in Orange County, I'm right here, and try to find out why you're short of breath. We'll go over it, we'll look at it, and we'll try to do things to correct it. It may not always be easy, but there's always a plan. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. I appreciate you guys being here today. Understand the five causes of hypoxemia, hypoventilation, reduced diffusion, BQ mismatch, shunt, and altitude. I want you guys to understand those terms and use them moving forward in your classes and in your clinics. Here I am today again, arming you with some more information. I want you to come back next week because you're going to need some more ammunition. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next Friday.